Hello everybody, welcome to Jimmy Does Knitting. I'm Jimmy, and this is my knitting, crochet, fiber arts podcast. Each week we go with the theme and we talk about some things that have happened in the past and current stuff and just sort of what the general thing of my knitting life is going to be. It's not your finished objects, works in progress, acquisitions, podcasts. I try to stick to one running thing that's current in my knitting obsession and then we go from there. So welcome. Today is Thursday, May something. Um, today is Hemelvaart. I don't know what that is. It's a Dutch holiday in the Netherlands. I've heard that Germany and Austria also has it off. And this is almost our last holiday of the year. We have all our holidays in the Netherlands in like April and May. So we have one more next week and then it's like no holidays until December. It's crazy. I don't understand it, but that's how it is. So I'm living my best life. I went and I got some bagels, which is like the one thing that I miss from America. It's just like a coffee and like a bodega sandwich from, you know, wherever. Um, I went to Flo's in Amsterdam. If you're here and you're missing some bagels, check them out. They are the best. And I walked to Stephen and Penelope. And I know that a lot of people like to give some background. I like to jump right into knitting. And because I went to Stephen and Penelope, we're gonna go off the topic a little bit first, and then we'll get back onto it. Um, topic today is stash busting, busting continued. I have done a lot of knitting. I have a lot of thoughts. We have my notes over here. And we have a bunch of things to talk about, like a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. And this is sort of how it goes. They either have like nothing or just like a ton of crap, just cause whatever happens. So stash busting. We have been very successful with our stash busting as of late since I made the first video and how we're going with things. Uh, I've sent the first thing off is working on a chevron blanket. I'll try to insert a picture here somewhere. And at the beginning of like April, end of March-ish, mostly April, I was having a really hard time. Um, I've heard this from a couple of other people, so it makes me feel good. But like, I was just out of energy. I couldn't do anything. I needed something completely mindless. I've like lost all of my knitting mojo. I could not knit whatsoever. And I was just fried and like work was so difficult. And in walks crochet. So I had this crochet blanket that I have been doing for forever because I way over ordered yarn. I ordered like 60 extra like 50 gram balls of like We Heart yarn. I don't even have any left. And I, I don't know, I like made something for my mom and then I was like, well, I'm knitting on this I'm knitting. I'm crocheting this chevron blanket. I love a chevron blanket. I think it's like one of my favorite things. And I did that. Um, with my other stash brushing project of Justin's flannel that I knit for my brother, my parents really liked that blanket. Um, they liked the yarn from the other one because it is a cotton yarn. So cotton and like linen yarns and stuff are really a lot heavier. And my dad's been wanting his own blanket. So those two things went off to America and they are being used and loved a little bit late in terms of the season because I think it's starting to get warm there, but it's still clearly sweater weather here in the Netherlands and it will remain so. So that was number one. Number two is this beast over here. I have been, no, let me get this. I have like this extra box in my you know, Billy bookcase thing of just scrap yarns. And most of them are scrap crochet yarns. And I didn't know what to do with them. I was knitting hats and like other things. And I was just, I wasn't getting through it. And then I got like burnt out. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna do a granny stripe blanket. And I want a big one. And you know when you cast on a crochet project and it shrinks? like because you chain and then it goes, this one did not. So it is quite large. Let me show you what I went up to and then we'll discuss. So uh, this is the project in question. 
Um, it is quite large. It is just a granny stripe blanket and it goes on and on and on. It's probably like king size bed plus in terms of size, but I'm just like going through my yarns. I've, it's probably about half the, I mean, it's really hard to show on here, but it's probably about half the size that it needs to be in terms of width. If I turn it on its side, it's actually a full blanket because I made it very wide. Um, so it's in this case, it's long and it covers me from about here down to my feet. And then this is definitely wide enough. But I at first started grabbing over here, random colors out of the box. And then I went into sort of what I felt needed to come next. And yeah, so I've used up a lot of my yarn and there's some stuff that's going into it. So a little bit of a, a, a breakdown on this. I followed some tutorials on YouTube about like how to granny stripe blanket or maybe it was like a website. I So I just, I don't know, like cast it on a bunch of stitches and then started doing granny stripes. Um, with the cast on, I did it so it wasn't actually like the, the loops. I did like a single crochet cast on, which I actually prefer because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control. And then uh, I went for it and I just went for it and went for it and went for it. And for like two weeks, two weeks, one week, this is all I could work on. I just like sat there on the couch and just crocheted away. Uh, it has all washable yarns in here. So none of my wool, none of my good ones. I would say this is all like DK worsted weight-ish. And like things like um, this red is a fingering weight. So I held it double. I've been weaving in my ends. You can kind of tell as I go. So you just have to snip them when they're done. So it's like, yeah, a big washable um, problem pattern, like no color sense whatsoever, uh, blanket that I've been knitting. I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know if it has a home. I've been told it's not going to be in my, <laughs> in my house. Um, but this really like saved me and the crochet, you know, I go through things. I started crochet actually before I started knitting. Um, because when I started knitting, I went to this knitting store that wasn't that great and they gave me, I wanted black yarn, which mistake, but also like they gave me some really terrible advice and like some really bad needles and I couldn't figure it out and it just didn't, it didn't work. So I crocheted for a couple of years and I really enjoyed making blankets, which is why I have so much extra yarn. But then I found knitting and I'm obsessed with knitting. I enjoy crochet, but I'm obsessed with knitting. But sometimes you need to change a pace and this was it. And I think that this really um, was a good way to take out a lot of like frustration and energy I have with like things. It, it like helps me out. Like this, this blanket really like got me through a really, really rough couple of weeks and same thing with the Chevron blanket and it was mindless and does it look good? Does it not? I don't know, but uh, I'm glad that I got to use up my scraps. And then there were some memories of certain things like the, the red is the first blanket that I ever made for my friend's baby. There's like, these colors were used for a friend's baby's first like knit sweater. There were some other ones in here that was for uh, my nephew's baby blanket. And it was, it was nice to go through it and just play because also Color, 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 color. So I have, I don't know if you can even see this, but this is what's left. There's some other things that are going to go in it when I get more, um, just just things that are like super wash or, or something like that. So, but this is going to be on hold for a while. Um, I made really, really good progress and I really liked it. And I was really happy that I had this craft and something completely stupid for me to do. Um, and I got to play and it was really enjoyable. So that is my granny stripe blanket. What I do want to confess to all of you is, you know, there are those like beige ladies. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. 
But in like the knitting world, sorry, I'm putting this blanket away. In the nerdy knitting world, there's like those women and they're all different ages and stuff, but they always knit these like beautiful sweaters that are like usually like held with like double with mohair and they're all beige and a lot of times they're like a top down raglan or something like that. And um, I don't know. I mean, they're really nice things and really nice products, but like I just, they're like beige ladies. And I, I'm, I, I'm an, a beige lady. <laughs> I am a beige lady. Um, but in black, like I am, I knit everything that I wear in black, um, because that's just what I do. It's the color I wear. And I think that that's, I mean, it's just what happens. Um, as you can see, this is black. We'll discuss this in a little bit. And, but all my other works and progress are black. I mean, I try different textures and constructions and, and stuff like that. And I try more challenging knits, but I mean, for me, it's black, um, which is a good transition. I skipped a little bit over it, but I went to Stephen and Penelope and I bought stuff with color. The first one is this onion yarn, um, onion, and it is, I don't know, like a dark brown. I don't know. And there's some Norwegian words on, Norwegians? Danish words on here um, that I can't really pronounce, but, oh yeah, it just says brown. Anyway, um, it says it's DK, it might actually be a fingering weight. This is 100% cotton, that's organic. And um, this is for a test knit for um, something coming up. We'll address that later. So I got some of these to do the test knit. This is for Mr. Does Knitting. He wanted a dark brown tank top. So we're getting him a dark brown tank top. Um, and then the other thing that I bought, and I finally got to use my Christmas gifts cards, is this. So this is a Life in the Long Grass. It is 100% Superwash Merino. Superwash is not my favorite, but I really, really was drawn to the colors. It's a fingering weight. It's what, 366 meters for 100 grams. And the color is stellar. And I'm going to make this for myself. Breaking my beige lady. I think that this, I can, I can deal with this. I think it's going to be good for what I want to do with it. But we will also go over that in the next thing. So teaser for you. We have some color coming up in terms of garments that I'm going to make and it's going to be nice. And I've been knitting, as I said, this is a stash busting issue, uh, issue stash busting video and I've been knitting with very affordable yarns. And so sometimes I like to do a little bit of color, sometimes a little bit of high low, all of that sort of thing. And this is this is pretty affordable, but this was a high and I'm not mad at it. And if I have leftovers, I really want to make like a lot of Nordic mittens. I don't know why. I just feel drawn to it. And I have a book with some in there. So I was like, let's explore. Anyway, these are very exciting. More to come on that. Back to stash busting. Um, but yeah, the previous two blankets, if I did not say, are all stash, stash, stash that I've just been like going through. Next on the list, ooh, I did something, and then this was beautiful. So this, can you see it, is my Flatten Genser by Ricker Berica, and this turned out so well. I was like sort of whatever on it um, when I was knitting it. Um, I used whole super soft. So there's a lot to discuss here and let's go into it. So this is um, a pattern from Barry Gerberka and he is in the, he made this Nordic knits, um, very traditional knitting patterns, exciting new looks. And um, you can see it's the same one as this like orangey one. So what I did is I, I played a little bit with the, the colors, the darker color is supposed to be the feature on the stars, so I inverted that. 
I also made these stripes a little bit um, more black than they should have been or more of the color than they should have been. And then like the neck, if I inverted everything was supposed to be white, but I wanted it black because it's me and that's what I knew. And it is a beautiful sweater and it turned out so well. Um, this is one of those patterns that, you know, they like have like three pages of like, like four pattern, including the, the um, chart. So we didn't read it very well, if I'm going to be honest, but it was a really, really nice pattern. It is a bottom up raglan. And I made some modifications. Um, I made the cuffs and the hem a little bit longer, I think by like maybe a half inch. And it also wanted a twisted rib. I wasn't bothered. Um, so that added length in here. And then it also added a little bit of length in the body. And maybe somebody can explain this to me, but it said like knit the body to X length. And that's the first thing that you do. And you just knit it around because it's color work. And then you're supposed to knit a sleeve and knit it to X length. But that X length is longer. Yet, you're supposed to end on the same row, like, as this. So I don't understand if you knit the same amount of rounds for this as this part, like, how this is, like, supposed to be two inches longer than this. I don't get it. Um, also, I didn't get gauge, but that's fine because this actually fits really nicely. Um, it's a little bit bigger. It's probably, like, 41 inches, and I knit, like, the size 39 my gauge swatches are off. I think that that's something that just happens to me is like it's a little bit tighter when I knit smaller, but when I knit like larger, it's not. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Um, and then I also added a little bit of length after you joined. I added like mm, three rows or something to make the yoke depth a little bit deeper because it seemed quite shallow on the um in the pattern and uh i didn't want that so in general holst does grow so it ended up being and my gauge was off so my like actual row gauge was higher so the the yoke depth ended up being pretty good i stretched the sleeves a little bit because the street sleeves were a little short but it was all within like blocking things um, I know what you're thinking, Holst, super soft, not super soft. Oh, by the way, I used, um, Holst super soft. I used the Acru color. I had these two cones in my stash, three cones, technically. It was the Acru, and there was a black one, and there was an ink one. Um, the ink has a little bit more of a bluey than a black. I used up all of the black, and then I switched to the ink within the color work. So, at the bottom of every, the cuffs hem, um, that started with the black and then somewhere in the wherever I transitioned into the ink. And you can't really notice it unless you're like specifically looking for it under like really, really good lighting. So I think that's fine. And then this was ink because I ran out of my uh, black cone, which is great. That was the whole purpose of it. And, um, I think it looks beautiful. I really like it. It turned out really soft. Um, a couple things is like the, there's no short row shaping in the back. What you do is you knit it flat. And I don't understand what everybody's talking about purling with color work. Maybe it's cause I continental purl, which means I like sort of like pick it and it like twists the stitch, but I'm so used to it that I know what end to to work through and it's whatever. But the purling actually in color work went really well. The problem came is I connected for sleeves at the wrong part because I did not read the pattern correctly. And then I had to like keep track of like this part of it was always a different row than this part, but sometimes and not really, sometimes it was like two rows ahead or something like that. And so like I'm purling in color work with this pattern, which is like 36, stitch pattern which is not necessarily very memorizable <laughs> and I'm reducing as I'm doing it and whatever so it's not the most perfect neckline but it's 
it's close and don't look too close, but the, I thought the perlating color work actually was fine. It's guys, don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's going to be all right. Um, I do knit color work um, because I started out with crochet. I do knit it with holding both colors in my left hand and then I, you know, pick with my right essentially. So uh, I, it went all right with me. And because I, you know, pick and do the continental pearl, like I didn't have to like move my finger when I was trying to pearl um, and, and do anything weird with that. So it, it worked out pretty well for me. Um, one thing that I did do, which I like to do, especially in um, sweaters that are like raglan or yoke, top down or bottom up, is I bound off for the neck, partially because it was easier, easier, but I like the idea of if it adds more structure, so it doesn't stretch the neck out over time, it really keeps things a little bit tighter. And then if I need to replace the collar or something at one point, I can rip this out and then I know it just needs to pick out the right amount of stitches and then go back at it. Um, and that's what I, I prefer. Uh, it's not, I mean, you really just like, the whole point is you just knit and around and around and around. But um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it works best for me. Holst actually is sort of flimsy when it's on its own. This is like a 2.5 millimeter. Um, and it's just like a, a little flimsier in terms of, yeah, like it doesn't have great structure. It's very lofty, lightweight, like, woolen spine. I know I did a whole video about this, but like, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, like a rustic sort of light yarn. And it's also thin. So I like the idea of being able to pull it out and put it back in, um, just in case. Uh, in terms of treating this, so I've knit a couple of garments from Whole Super Soft, including garments from both of these cones. And I did something a little bit different when I treated this because I wanted, I was really concerned about the color bleeding. So Whole Super Soft has the spinning wool in it, but also the colors sort of bleed just in general. I know this from experience with like the black and the ink for sure. And then having the, the bleeding ones next to the white, I was really scared that the white was just gonna turn gray in muddles. So here's how I washed it and I recommend doing this. I put like a tiny little bit of dish soap into, and vinegar into a cold tub. So I have like a tub in my shower thing that I, um, I put it in and I soaked the garment in there for like five minutes and the water was cold. So the vinegar helps um, the colors stay and then the, and like not bleed and then the dish soap helped with some of the spinning oil. So I did that. I left it for like five minutes to reduce bleeding. And then I drained it. I did it again, um, this time without the dish soap because I thought it was fine. And I did vinegar and um, put this in very cold water for that amount of time. And then after that, I put um, a bunch of euclid or like whatever your preferred wash is, and I made it really soapy. And I did like a, a 15 minute soak in cold, cold, cold water. And this is the fluffiest and nicest like I've ever gotten the whole super soft to be. And it will, I've worn this once and it already feels good. I know that with wear it will actually um, get a little bit nicer as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it looks good on me. Like I like it. I would like it a lot more than I thought I would. And I don't know why sometimes I hate projects when, I, when I'm doing them and then I do it and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Um, but I was a really big fan of this and I think it's beautiful for all of those that are a little bit perverty. Um, you can look at my float work. It's nothing to write home about, but, uh, this is the wrong side. Ooh, uh, um, yeah. So that's the, the Flaffengenser. I would recommend this. I really liked some sort of like traditional, um, soft Norwegian all over color work pattern that's like insane to do. I think that this is like a knitting wardrobe 
like goal to have something like this. And I mean, it's not like winter, winter, winter because it's holst. Um, it's so light, but it, because it's, you know, color work, it's double-sided and it, it will keep me warm. It's hundred percent wool. It will have a lot of air in it. And I'm looking forward to wearing this more. The season for it's sort of done, but yeah. Um, I would highly recommend Breaker Breaker's patterns. I would not say that this is his patterns are beginner because they're written that sort of more like a recipe, like, you know, they, it doesn't hold your hand with everything, but it's certainly clear enough where if you actually read it, you'll pick up in the right spot and do stuff. Um, another thing, <laughs> I, I never done a bottom up raglan before. So the armpit, I mean, it looks fine now, but like, I totally like, forgot to bind off for the armpit and do it. And then it's like, I'll just use a three needle bind off. No, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not how it works. You, you have to like, I should have, I went back and I bound off the stitches. Like I put it on waist yarn, I got a crochet hook, bound it off. And then I sewed like the stitches a little bit beforehand and then the, the bound off row. And then I incorporated like the one loose stitch with each end. Um, under there. So the armpit looks fine now, but I chose the very hard way to do it. So um, make sure you read the patterns, kids, because otherwise you're going to make things difficult, like this neck shaping for me. Um, don't do it. But love, love, love. I love the yarn. I love the pattern. Um, I'm very pleased with this, and I'm excited to wear it continuously. Uh, the Netherlands does not get very warm or very summery, although it's supposed to next week, which I am looking forward to. But uh, it's just, um, yeah, it will be good for me to do this and I wear it. It gets really cold at night. Um, yeah, so excited about it. That's me gush gushing over my Nordic knits. Um, next. So the hoodie. I decided to make a hoodie. We'll discuss that a little bit. We're using scrap yarn for it. I have, I think like 22 balls of drops Nord over there. Anyway, so I have a ton of this drops Nepal. It's like a worsted weight yarn. It is 65% wool, 35% alpaca. It's really nice. And this is going to be a self-designed pattern that I really love. Um, it's all texture. It is a hoodie. And I think I have like five black hoodies in my, my wardrobe and I love texture. So let me share. I did submit this for a magazine and got rejected. And this was the swatch, which maybe you can see why I got rejected, but like, um, the idea was to create a mohair with two mohair, um, two strands of mohair and then like one fingering weight and then you have a fuzzy part, you have this welt and then here I use like a, a moss stitch with a knitting for olive heavy merino, which I will make a full garment in one day because it's amazing. And it's, yeah, it will keep you occupied. The way that it's done, it's, it's almost like a shawl where it has like these different sections that still keep you occupied. I have a whole construction in mind, whatever. Anyway, we'll discuss that in the next video. The This got rejected, fine. We're doing something else. I was obsessed with this stitch. I don't even know if you can see it. Um, is this reading? Yes, it is. So this is the seersucker stitch. And I was like, are you telling me I can make a quilted like looking hoodie? The answer is yes. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, really into it. Like I love texture and like a black hoodie. And this is going to be my first pattern, I think. Maybe not. I have some other things that I just actually need to write up, but um, I'm thinking this is going to be my first garment that I'm going to make and publish. And I'm very much looking forward to it. It will be like a shawl in that you have like different sections to keep you occupied as well as an interesting construction if I can figure it out. And we can go from there. 
Um, but really, really excited to work on this. It's not top priority because they do have a test net and it's summer-ish, coming to be summer. So those things need to happen so we can use them for the time now, but be on the lookout for this and it will like ruin my stash in terms of like, I had the 60 balls of um, the one for the blanket. I probably used like 30, 40 for that other blanket. I have 22 that went out for my, um, for a raglan that I made for my brother and my Saturday shrug, and then like another set or two here. I used up a cone of holst. I've used up the, you know, whatever else I have left. I don't know, I didn't weigh any of this stuff, but this was all scrap stuff. And I think, I mean, my stash will be just like pieces that I can't do much with after that, but that's the plan and I'm doing pretty well. Uh, cool. Next one is the Redford sweater. So you're saying, Jimmy, didn't you already do a Redford sweater? And aren't you already wearing it? And don't you look beautiful in it? And I'm going to say yes to all of them. And that's what's happening. So this is the Redford sweater by Julie Hoover. It's um, a Brooklyn tweed pattern. It's really, really basic. And I wanted a basic and like cheap, like inexpensive, um like mohair thing. So back to my holst, like one strand of super soft holst and then one strand of drops mohair. And then I'm going to make a new Redford sweater. Um, it's just like a basic, it's drop shoulder-ish, set in sleeve. I don't know, cause it has these panels. I don't even know if you can see this, but like, look at my armpit. Um, there's panels here with like this, um, texture. Can you even see this? It has a texture there. Um, this is just stock and net. There's like a nice little V here. Um, and then like you sew in the sleeves and stuff. So this is a like top down in pieces sweater. Um, this is a, a great basic. This was the first one that I knit, which is why it looks a little wonky but we won't judge. Um, the collar and like the ribbing is three by one. It, it's not It's not a thing that works. Um, the sleeves are a little, they're better with wear, but they're not great. And it's like the way that I picked up stitches, it's like, what are you doing? So I did want to take another stab at it. Um, I also did this part, um, this piece, armpit again, hey, um, in stocking net, and it was supposed to be pearl, like the pearl side of things. Um, but I didn't want that at the time. Uh, I don't know. I did this in Bicycle, no, Westworld Tandem. It is wearing so well. I've had this for a year and a half and it's just starting to pill and I wear it regularly. Uh, so I'm really quite pleased with the yarn. And <coughs> it was interesting. I went back to my Ravelry, which is like, I did this before I even got Ravelry. And I was like, I'm not sure I will knit this again. Cause it was hard at the time. And I think it took like four months or it took a while and it's a really easy sweater. Well, not easy to me now, but at the time I was just like, this is really complicated. And like, I wasn't like sold on it because I didn't really understand how to put this together. It was probably not the best first sweater, but um, it's good enough that I wear it all the time and I like it. So that's good. So. Like I said, we're taking another stab at it and we're trying to like be better than we were before. I'm using this. Um, this is what's left of my whole super soft ink cone. So not a lot. I'm actually anticipating maybe having to make another holst order, which is fine because I need some more stuff for my stash because I always want a black cone. And then um, drops, kid silk, mohair. I bought like nine balls of this because I mean, I don't know how I, I look. Me estimating yarn and trying to figure out how much I need for a project, even when I do stuff, is out of control. I can, I know, I always seem to order over order a ton, like a ton, and that's what my stash mostly is, as evidenced by me ordering 60 extra balls for a blanket. Um, so I had like 
five of these in my stash. I didn't even know I had five of them. Um, it's fine. It, it's great, but like, what am I doing ordering so much? Anyway, these two combine to make um, this. And it looks really, I mean, it's plain. This is the back of it. It's just stock in that. It's not even finished. It, there's a little bit of shaping. Nothing to write home about, but I really enjoy it. I'm using the exact same needles as this one, and I'm doing it on 3.75 millimeters. The pattern calls for actually like fingering weight yarn on 3.5 millimeters. So I'm knitting the smallest size. I'm doing the same thing as I did with this, and I've the gauge is the same because I've already knit and blocked a vest for Mr. Does Knitting with this combo. So I know that this gauge and this gauge are the same, and I quite like how this fits. So it's the smallest size, um, but it, this is going to be like three inches wider than the smallest size is. And then this one, I don't know what I did for the length. I mean, it's shorter. This this one is shorter than it needs to be by like a lot. And I like, who knows what she did? Nobody knows. Nobody knows, but we're, we're going to do it right this time. And um, it's a great... I mean, this is know, a couple days worth of work. It's a great stock and net, easy knitting, fun stuff um, sort of thing. So yeah, I am looking forward to doing this and this will be my last big stash busting thing. And yeah, it's not important. I have enough sweaters for now and I really wanted this for like next winter. It just really moved up in my queue for some reason. I think it's because I was stash busting and I was like, well, I have this cone and a bunch of this yarn. Like, why don't I use this all? And yeah, I'm very curious about how this is going to be different than this one because uh, even though the timing, I think I finished this in maybe like November, December... 2021 and this is like a year and a half like later um I've, i i obviously am a lot more skilled of a sweater knitter now like i've done crazy cables and um you know full color work and like weird constructions and stuff and um something like this would be great and the best part is i mean this was free you know that one is going to be mostly free i'm probably gonna have to buy some yarn but like also the pattern was free like i had the pattern in my library i didn't pay for anything um it was just like all there for me to use and capitalize on and i think that that's great and affordable um i'm going on fun employment soon <laughs> So, uh, the more affordable my knitting can be, because I'm going to start like boom, 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 uh, the better for me. So that's like a, a, a great solution for that. Right. The, uh... oh, one other thing I want to mention is I'm probably going to have to buy some more mohair for that, which means I'm going to make another order of drops. And I'm going to buy some like Drops Charisma. And what I really want to do is knit an Ingrid sweater. And I like the Drops Charisma because it's super wash. And I can make the Ingrid sweater junior because sometimes I like making little tiny like toddler knits that are great for like a palette cleanser. You get to try a color that I would not do because I do it in black. And you just like, they are done within like a weekend, a week, for me at least. And um, they're fun and you get to try all these like patterns that you like wouldn't knit for yourself. Luckily, I have a nephew whose mother loves a, uh, a knitted garment and she is visiting next weekend, weekend after, something, end of May. And um, that's going to be fun. But to break the stash busting, that's all my stash busting. That's where we are. Those are going to be the last projects that I'm going to do is like the hoodie and then the Redford and then the rest is I'm just going to go crazy and buy a bunch of yarn again. Um, hoping to panic less because remember, I like to panic buy and I always am unprepared. I mean, they're like whoosh and everything's done all of a sudden or it's like nothing. Anyway, I made another one of these. I love this. I love this. 
This is the second time I've knit this one. And this is in uh, Drops Big Merino in the color Forest Green. It's a worsted weight, superwash yarn. Not my favorite yarns, but uh, it works well for a kid's sweater and it's beautiful. This is the Strick Cafe by Tonya. No, it's Tonya Honda. Sorry, I mispronounced your name, but this is the sweater that I've knit a couple times and I cannot um, say the name. Korshvan, Korshvan, something like that. It doesn't matter. It's beautiful. It's this basket weave pattern and it's so squishy. It's such a pleasure to knit. I really love it. I really like it. It's so nice. And yeah, it's like a well-written pattern. It's it's just like perfect for that little kid. Can you imagine like a little kid running around in this thing? So cute. Um, so that's what I did. And I will probably knit this again. They also have this in the adult sizes, by the way. Like it's not just a children's one. Uh, I almost knit an adult size one for me because it is, excuse me. <coughs> It's fun to knit. It's beautiful. I like it. But I have not done one for me. Maybe one day, maybe not. Modifications. I made the body a little bit longer because this is the size up from the one that I knit him before and he's grown out of it. But like the number of baskets is the same. So it's like wider, but not much longer. So I added an extra basket row. And then I've heard that with like kids garments, it's best to knit the sleeves a little bit longer. So I've added actually a couple basket rows. And the idea <clears throat> is while he's like smaller, he can wear it like this, which how adorable. And then as he grows, he can, you know, roll it out a little bit or completely take this out. So it's like stretch Armstrong a little bit. Um, but the idea is that he can wear this a little bit longer. Maybe, maybe not. I like knitting it. I thought it was great. Um, I will probably knit it again and it's a beautiful sweater. So that is what I had for that. And I think that's all. I think that's an episode. Um, thank you all who have made it this far. I've noticed a lot more viewers, so I appreciate you coming and watching and sharing my enthusiasm for knitting. And we will, I already know what I'm going to talk about the next time. There's going to be some color. There's going to be some designing. There's going to be some drama and some frogging, all of it. But that's for next video. This one is stash busting. Um, I hope you are all doing well and that May brings you some sun. I will see you all in hopefully two weeks and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and yeah, let me know if you need anything. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.